gives you lemons, make lemonade. That is a normal cliche. Now, which insurance company would ever think uh, that uh, would name their company as lemonade? When life gives you lemons, basically, when you have a problem, you never really think about it until good thing you have insurance. So why is Lemonade delighting their customers? Which is why I entitled today's topic, Delighting Your Customers. This company uh, reminds me of uh, some quotes and today's quote is, mediocrity does not win fans and loyal customers. Being remarkable does. Being remarkable. So why am I giving such a high superlative uh, adjective to call call uh, this company Lemonade. A few things you know about brands, but, uh, but there is a higher form of brand and we call them cults. You can see it evident when people tattoo these brand icons into them, their own. So Coca-Cola and Apple, perhaps, even Tesla. So Tesla is considered a cult. Tesla is now a relig religion and Elon Musk is its unquestioned messiah. Uh, when you successfully have uh, a good thing and not just a good thing, you have a cult that is actually an awesome 10x company. Give people something to care about. Nothing motivates more than a shared purpose. Brand, customer strategy, marry it together. You've got loyalty and that loyalty is for life. In order to do that, you need to have this fact. You need to have an exceptional product, service, or experience sparking conversation. Cult brands are forged when a product or service finds a way to fill a consumer need uniquely, which naturally gets attention and ignites word of mouth. For instance, Lemonade, take a look at some things people are saying lately, all I ever want to do is passion rant to people about Lemonade Inc. Just signed up for Lemonade Inc. Home Insurance. It's a B corporation. Their software is through the roof. Good. Launched by Dan O'Reilly. Of course, those who aren't aware, Dan O'Reilly is, uh, yes, the behavioral economist, Dan O'Reilly. Behavioral psychologist. Yoshi just signed up with Lemonade Inc. It is 60% cheaper than my current plan. Lemonade just quoted me for renters 25% less the price of Geico, as in Warren Buffett's insurance firm. I can't wait for them to expand to more service lines and disrupt incumbents. Lemonade, holy crap, I just bought renters insurance in less than two minutes and I actually enjoyed it. This is about as user-friendly as it gets, but my favorite part is that I could even choose where I could do donate the unclaimed money to a cause of my choice. So it takes all the boxes, CSR, social good, great UI, people love it. Here's what happens when you have a loyal company, loyalty in action. Engaged customers are buying 90% more frequently from a brand. Engaged customers spend 60% more dollars per transaction. Nine times six equals 540% includes 500% higher sales. And that is what engaged customers can do for your company and for your portfolio. Okay, so um, a lot of uh, more homeowners, renters, and health, pet health insurance have chosen where to uh, find their best insurance for the 21st century. The answer is Lemonade. Lemonade's amazing coverage protects the stuff you own at home and everywhere else. Let's say a fire occurred at your home. Is your home insurance uh, easy, affordable, and uh, you know, can you appreciate that insurance firm? Maria Salamanca said, I was always disappointed in how much insurance will fight against customers in a claim. I just had my first good experience with a filing, unbelievably quick, solid customer experience with Lemonade Inc. Rohan Gandhi said, I just bought home insurance from you and I'm pretty sure it was easier than ordering pizza. Awesome job on the experience. Awaking Dream said, once every two to three years, I stumble across a fully outstanding app or business which nails everything from the user interface to the experience to the pricing, customer service. Lemonade has it all. Indeed, Lemonade.com. So I love it. So I'm telling you that I'm Filipino, so I don't have this firsthand experience. 
what I do know is that when people talk about a company, it naturally, uh, it is almost like a signal to me, like a buy signal to me for, for me to study. So <laughs> Lemonhead says in its website, forget everything you know about insurance, instant everything, no brainer prices and a big heart. And it was an almost five-star insurance company. Lemonade has earned 4.9 stars in the Apple App Store and Google Play. It's also top rated by Super Money, Clear Assurance, and others. So when I see something like that, I automatically think, wow, can it dominate an industry? Right now, it is considered a disruptor. But disruptors, you know for, your, for a fact that uh, Google said that they wanted to 10x, not 10% thinking. Is Lemonade a 10x company then, given how massive uh, the industry pie is for uh, insurance and how Lemonade is disrupting this entire industry? Lemonade Insurance is an American property and casualty insurance company headquartered in New York City. It offers renters and home insurance policies for homes, apartments, also pet health, co-ops, and condos in many U.S. states, in addition to content and liability policies in Germany and the Netherlands. So they've expanded territory, U.S., Germany, and Netherlands. You know, it's actually a very good company that I want you to uh, hear what this five-year-old company has made. Yes, Lemonade has just started and founded in 2015, but everything about the company is actually admirable. It even reminds me a little bit of... Uh, a little bit about those cult brands, Steve Jobs and a little bit of Elon Musk. So let's watch. I think when you play the word association game with the word insurance, you get some pretty shocking answers. Um, rip off. I'm not really I'm trusting, trusting them. they overwhelming. Um, daunting and just kind of like unknown, like a scam. It's like a trigger word, like boring, like just corporate and like, yeah, I don't want to deal with that. Expensive. <laughs> Evil. It's like you think they're going to cover it, but then it's like, oh, we didn't, you didn't read the fine print about the tires of the bike not being covered. It's like, okay, so then why did I get this in the first place? When we created Lemonade, we wanted to create an insurance company that would have an entirely different word cloud associated with it. And I think you will find a lot of people talk about Lemonade as being delightful, aligned, socially impactful. Words like trust and love. Those are the kinds of words that I think consumers have come to associate with Lemonade. Daniel and I have both been tech entrepreneurs for 20 years. And it just so happened, we were looking for the next big thing. So we started looking at different industries, but when we came to insurance, we stopped. We had found our destination. The more we thought about it, the more we realized that insurance may be the largest disruptable industry on the planet. Even though neither of us had come from the world of insurance, we found three things in insurance that just about never come together, that elusive trifecta. The first one was just how vast the insurance sector is. In America, you're talking about something like 11% of GDP, and it's about $5 trillion worldwide. Some of the largest insurance companies in the world do over $100 billion a year, but none of them has above 4% market share. The idea that you can be a Fortune 100 company and have only 4% market share, that just blew our mind. The second thing that we found was that it's largely unchanged. It's really dominated today by the same companies that dominated 100 years ago, and sometimes 200 years ago, and sometimes 300 years ago. In the United States, 12 of the Fortune 100 companies are insurance companies, and their average age is about 125. 125 years ago, there were no airplanes, there was no air conditioning, there were no antibiotics. So the world has been transformed, but insurance really hasn't. That speaks to a profound opportunity for innovation. And the third element is that it's a deeply unloved sector. In the Urban Dictionary, the crowdsourced definition for the word insurance is a business that involves selling people promises to pay later that are never fulfilled. We didn't know much about insurance, but we did know that it was unloved and unspoiled by innovation. For us, that signaled the ultimate opportunity to start from scratch. We decided to use our ignorance for all it's worth and to do some first principles thinking. We started to think, what kind of insurance company would we love? What could we bring from the experience that we had in the tech sector, in the sharing economy, in consumer-centric innovation, 
And how could we use all of those to build an insurance company if we had an entirely blank page? So we decided to take a run at reimagining it. Our strategy is really quite simple. It begins with being customer-centric, devoutly customer-centric. That may sound trite, but in insurance, it's a formidable task. The very business model of insurance is seen as pitting insurers against their customers. But if you do the hard work of modernizing the business model and actually get to delighting customers that, that can fuel rapid growth, very rapid growth. Growth is valuable in and of itself, but for us, it does double duty. It generates huge amounts of highly predictive proprietary data. At its core, insurance is about monetizing probability theory. And so a sustained data advantage means a sustained advantage at pricing and underwriting risk. That's the very heart of insurance. Finally, given how our business is built atop of a digital substrate, those data serve as training data sets for many aspects of our business allowing us to refine our algorithms, increase our efficiency, and lower our costs to the delight of our customers. And so the loop closes, the flywheel turns, and the moat grows stronger with every rotation. That is our strategy. It starts with delighting the customer. Always put the customer at the center. Build a technology stack that is customer-centric, a business model that is customer-centric, a user experience that is all about the customer. Not the policy, not the broker, not the regulator, not the technology, the customer. We wanted to build an insurance company that people actually love by removing friction from the process. The perception is that insurance companies make money by denying claims. So there's conflict of interest at the very core of the business model. You claim $1,000 and I'm the insurance company. If I pay those $1,000, you're a thousand richer and I'm a thousand poorer. So when it comes to paying your claim, we're fighting over the same coin it's difficult to build a lovable brand atop of a conflicted relationship. The idea is to make as much money as you can and give out as little as you can for an insurance company. That's their bottom line, right? That's kind of how they operate as a business. I don't feel like they like actually have my back. Yeah, <laughs> you know. That's why we built our own insurance carriers in both America and in Europe. We own our licenses. We own the relationship with the regulators and we own the relationship with the customer. Building our platform from scratch, every license, every line of code enabled us to reimagine what the business model of a modern digital insurer can be. At Lemonade, when you pay us a buck, you know in advance that we will keep a fixed fee, currently 25%. We use the remaining 75 to pay your claims and reinsurance, and if there's money left over at year's end, we give it back to nonprofits of your choosing. These two programs are charitable give back and our reinsurance, they act as ballasts stabilizing our flat fee. And we believe that changes everything. Insurance is a high retention subscription business, which is why the top line of insurance companies are usually stable and predictable, but their bottom lines can literally fluctuate with the weather. Earthquakes, hailstorms, wildfires, hurricanes, all these can strike with little or no warning. And that volatility means that insurance often see wild swings in their results. And that is why they must keep such capital intensive reserves for those rainy days. Lemonade works differently. The way we have structured our reinsurance means that we have dramatically curtailed any tail risks, letting us operate as a capital light business with predictable results, even in years with bad surprises. What about the years with good surprises? Well, when the variance is favorable, we share that good fortune with nonprofits chosen by our customers. As a certified B Corp and a mission-driven company, this annual giveback is hugely meaningful to us all. But it goes much deeper than just feeling good. Taken together, our charitable giveback and our reinsurance, they mean that we are less incentivized to deny your claims, and you're less incentivized to embellish them. And so the insurance vicious cycle of spiraling distrust starts to look more and more like a virtuous cycle. That we believe ultimately lowers friction, lowers fraud, lowers churn, lowers costs, all to the benefit of our shareholders, our customers, and their chosen charities. The Upshot is a capital light, contemporary and predictable business model that, we think, turns a transactional and conflicted relationship into an aligned and meaningful one. It's nice to know that you're dealing with an organization that isn't hedging their bets that you won't file a claim so they can 
get richer. The money that you're putting in is actually supporting a cause that you uh, really care about. We chose Women in Need uh, to be able to support women across the United States. We chose Teach for America, which I chose because my wife is a teacher. I chose One for Animals because I have a dog. It was really important to be working with a company that had the same values that we do. We've seen people who have gotten their claim paid for, let's say, a stolen laptop, suddenly find their laptop or have their laptop returned to them. And they now write into Lemonade asking, how can we return this money? This money is, doesn't belong to us. It actually should be going to our charity that we chose. And we believe that this is kind of bringing out the best in all of us and really changing how we treat insurance and really making us a society that is connected to one another. After we architected the foundations of Lemonade to increase alignment with customers, it was time to build a technology stack to delight them. Everything about our product feels radically different than what you'd expect. You buy insurance from Lemonade by chatting with our bot, Maya. I'm me, <laughs> and there's Maya the bot, which is, uh, I would say, an AI version of me. I signed up, like, in 30 seconds. It was done. Easy. More often than not, when I'm dealing with other insurance companies, I've got lots of paperwork, lots of phone calls, lots of waiting times. But that wasn't my experience when I was using Lemonade. Chatting to Maya is playful. People enjoy the experience. They often post about how easy, unexpected, and refreshing it was. She's much more efficient and very, very nice, I'm told. To help people feel comfortable and understand what they're buying, we hardly use any insurance language in the process. Using the Lemonade app was nice and easy, straight to the point, and it was immediately done. It's so much more pleasant when you can just like text your insurance company. When you get coverage quickly and painlessly, it transforms the experience from a hassle to something joyful. Decreasing dependency on agents helps us lower costs and pass on savings to customers. This can be dramatic, with minimum premium costs often 50% less than our competitors for first-time buyers of our renter's insurance. In addition to the purchase experience, we've completely reimagined how claims work. Claims are the most important part of our business. When you buy insurance, the product you're actually buying is the ability to file a claim. So we designed a digital process that allows us to handle and pay claims much faster. Our AI bot, Jim, can often determine if a claim is valid, and if it is, pay it in seconds. In about 96% of the cases, Jim will take first notice of loss. In fact, Jim handles, settles, and pays about a third of our claims instantly. This is all done with absolutely no human intervention. I had found out that I'd actually been reimbursed about 15 minutes after I'd filed my claim. When I tell people about the whole incident, you get this like, oh my God. And it's just like, no, nah, it, wasn't, it wasn't an oh my God thing. It was, it's almost like it didn't even happen. I found that uh, several items were missing. My bike was parked on the side of the street. My purse was stolen, which had my wallet, cards, iPhone. So as soon as I got home, I just made sure to um, file a police report and like make sure the police knew everything. My phone got stolen in Amsterdam. So as soon as we got back to New York, um, the first thing that I... So uh, you can watch that video all together from Daniel Schreiber's uh, YouTube. Uh, I'll share you the links later on. Uh, but let me just repeat that the brands that dominate today were dominated during the era of the horse-drawn carriage. He said that 125 years ago, we didn't have airplanes, internet, and there has been tremendous longevity. And a question at hand is that, are these legacy insurers going to dominate the generation of the next 10, 100 years? Insurance is a $100 billion business, uh, and the total trillions of GDP that you see uh, is uh, already controlled by your insurance. Daniel Schreiber, the co-founder and CEO of Lemonade, predicts a shift, a significant changing of the guard. The assets have to be, um, that have been built up over the decades are now suddenly a liability. What is their brand, their distribution methodology? What are their IT stacks? So they come from uh, their 20 years of uh, experiences came from technology. Both of the co-founders are tech veterans and they laid out uh, 
and envisioned what insurance has to be. They created a substrate, so they created a data by its very foundation. They staffed it with bots uh, rather than insurance brokers, and they used AI in favor of actuaries. So they use artificial intelligence and chatbots. So you will see Maya later on, which is the chatbots. Now, since 1400s, uh, you could see that Francesco Di Marco Datini also had a bad word to call the insurance. It is sweet of them to take my money, but when the disaster comes, uh, when life gives you lemons, it is, on, it is always uh, each man draws his rump back and strives not to pay. So our insurance industry, uh, according to Urban Dictionary, has involved selling people promises to pay later that are never fulfilled. So broken promises, the insurance industry. 25% of us people actually think that insurance fraud is okay. Embellishment has been uh, considered by people as okay. Surveys says a quarter of Americans think it is acceptable to defraud insurance companies. That is uh, coming from CNN February 20, 2003. That hasn't changed since today. So uh, how did the lemonade change the game? Yes, uh, you heard me right. I do believe that uh, lemonade is a game changer. First and foremost, how many companies does insurance with an instant everything? Maya is an intelligence bot, uh, a charming AI bot will craft the perfect insurance for you using uh, questions that are actually, uh, it's about 13 questions, but those questions have uh, 1,600 data points. 90 seconds to get insured, three minutes to get paid. Uh, that is true. So we have seen a lot of uh, experience reviews. No-brainer prices, monthly subscription. Renters have a monthly from at least $5 up, depending on what type of rent you are insuring, what kind of building, uh, and so forth. Homeowners are insuring for $25 a month. And then, of course, there's also pet health insurance monthly from $10. So it is a heavily millennial-ish, uh, millennially uh, geared type of uh, insurance, but uh, I'll tell you all the strategies and why this company came from first they hate you, then they copy you. Lemonade has been copied by some of the incumbents uh, so far. Already insured, switched to Lemonade instantly. People have left these insurance companies to jo join Lemonade. Allstate, Liberty Mutual, Geico, Geico, Travelers, State Farm, Assurance Farmers, Homesite, uh, Progressive, Stillwater, and more. You know that Warren Buffett owns Geico. Yes, he was using all those uh, insurance premiums to invest and reinvest for Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, but as you know, Lemonade is a company that uh, seeks to just uh, have 75 take a 25% flat fee. And uh, the 75% should cover all those insurance claims that uh, you are uh, you are having insured. So if you tried, so Dan O'Reilly said, actually, the reason why people like to use embellishments and frauds to insurance companies is because of simple behavioral economics. Dan O'Reilly is the chief behavioral officer of Lemonade, and I believe in him as well. Uh, of course, he's a successful author called Irrational Economics, if you heard about that. He said, if you tried to create a system to bring out the worst in humans, it would look a lot like the insurance today. So uh, I prefer working and investing my money, or probably if I could, of course, if I'm not an American, but if I could, I'd love to be a customer of, uh, of Lemonade, of people like them. They built it from scratch. They use behavioral economics to influence AI for the bots, big data, and machine learning. Group bias, game theory, conflicts of interest. So that really was the, what, that was the starting of uh, building this. That is the reason why Lemonade reversed the traditional insurance model. We treat the premiums you pay as if it is your money, not ours. With Lemonade, everything becomes simple and transparent. We take a flat fee, that is 25% cut of the pizza pie and nothing more. They pay claims super fast and they give back what is left to causes you care about. So if there is money left over, as you heard, they do give it to your charity. They won't uh, invest that uh, other money to other things. 
So this company has really, uh, I'm going to share to you how this company, when I reviewed it, is a cult brand. Cult brand, building better brands. What are the anatomies of a cult brand? A cult brand has to, uh, it has to take the following things. Number one, it has to be remarkable, uh, delivered extraordinary. So uh, two minutes insurance. What the hell, right? That is a remarkable thing. Uh, have a purpose. Be driven by a powerful ethos. Correct. They have a purpose. Let's fix this uh, insurance industry. Be inspirational. Inspire from the inside out. Be relatable. Be involved. Be pervasive. I will show to you later uh, experiences of people with this brand. And they have created customers for life. That is actually something that uh, they have done. From a millennial who's just renting, someday she is going to own her home and then she's going to graduate and keep on becoming a customer for life of Lemonade. So as you know, there are several cults. You could see from these brands, this cult is Nike. Uh, this is uh, Ikea, right? This is Burberry. This is Adidas, Colt Cola. This is... Uh, Okay, brands, okay, cult. If you need to know more, um, the, so there's actually this uh, article in May 31, 1999. Barron's released a magazine, Amazon Moment. The idea that Amazon.com CEO Jeff Bezos has pioneered a new business paradigm is silly. He's just another middleman. The stock market is beginning to catch on that. 1999, Amazon went down. Uh, they even called Amazon bomb. Of course, 20 years later, you know what happened to Amazon. So now we are laughing on this article. Today, uh, you might be laughing on how Lemonade is disrupting the game. It is a very small player. If you think about the, the, the behemoths that it is against, up, up, up against. But um, you have to think for yourself, indeed, are we having an Amazon moment in the insurance industry? And have the numbers been picking up? Wait up. Ah, okay. Ford. Ah, Ford was, uh, yeah. So the, the brand, hindi na kasi cult ang Ford eh. Tesla na eh. <laughs> A while ago. Anyway, um, IFP. Uh, let me just discuss what IFP means. Uh, what you see right now, IFP is uh, the total revenues. Uh, $133 million. Now you might say, what's $133 million? Zero to $133 million, uh, three years of growth. What it means is that in Q1 2020, they've insured 730,000 customers and uh, an average annual rate of $183. If you multiply $730,000 times $183, that would come out to be $133 million. I forgot the definition of IFP, but that, that is how the IFP uh, is. Now, um, this is how their revenue growth looks like. 2018, they had, uh, if you think about it in just uh, dollars, 22.5 went to 67,300, and then this rose to $262,000. So 200% um, and then 64%. Sorry, um, this is just Q1 2020. So uh, you have to still multiply 26,200 times four or 100, uh, 100 plus thousand or marking a growth of about 64% if we analyze the Q1. Now they have customer growth, an insane 96% year on year, an average of 26% increase quarter on quarter. March 2018, they had 118,000 customers. As of first quarter 2020, they had 729,000 customers. If you check uh, the company's stock price in the private equity world, Lemonade, prior to the IPO, traded as low as $1.64. If there was a company that was a true disruptor in the private equity world, uh, that would have been Lemonade. This company, Series A, was trading at $4. Series B was $7. Series C was another double. Series D was $42. At IPO, it's $28. At the edge of the, uh, at the end of the, this uh, so far actually, IPO of uh, Lemonade went as high as 96. It's now dropped to a uh, to a more acceptable price of about 50 dollars. I don't know if we can get Lemonade at 42 or 28. That said, if it goes 42 or 28, uh, my answer here is that there is a reason why this company keeps doubling every single year. 
Do you want to invest in a company that doubles or triples every single year, not just in customers, but also in stock price and revenues? Because as you know, it is a little bit like a SaaS business model. Insurance premium is a pre predictable, uh, predictable type of business. Take a look at some financials. Um, December 31, 2019, March 31, 2020, uh, for their pro forma statement, what does this mean? It says here that their total investments cash is about 275. The premiums received, re reinsurance, reinsurance recoverable, 57.22. Total assets, $400 million. So uh, that is just adding it up. Add, add everything. Total investments, fixed maturities available for sale, fair value, short-term investments, liabilities and coverage. So they have a lot of liabilities for those uh, for potential losses. So other liabilities can include expenses, 124. These are their commitments in stockholders' equities. Therefore, their total stockholders' equities deficit, 276. Accumulated deficit is $234 million. Okay, um, lots of numbers, but uh, what, I, what I just have to under, okay, this is also an explanation how Lemonade differs from traditional insurance companies. The, the discussion there is about the AI and the bots, the, 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 artifo the artificial intelligence computes rather than the actuaries. Uh, I remember uh, I used to want to actually be an actuary, to be a mathematician, to compute. Uh, but then again, I figured, why, why do I want statistics in my life? Um, this Lemonade app is one minute. Uh, this one is just to calculate what dollar amount per month you have to pay depending on what you're insuring. Why don't you watch this first? One minute. <laughs> Investors of uh, Lemonade. So, uh, for your information, SoftBank has a stake here at twenty-eight dollars. Sequoia Capital and Aleph holds an eight percent stake. General Catalyst Group has a six percent stake, and Daniel, Daniel Schreiber, the CEO, holds a twenty-eight percent. Shai Winninger, also the co-founder, holds, holds a twenty-nine percent stake. So they own fifty-eight percent. That represents skin in the game. I like that. Lemonade, however, said that large stakeholders will not be able to vote with more than 9.9% .9 of the outstanding stock in the event that such approval does not permit the holder to vote more than 9.9%. The positive access of voting rights shall be distributed pro rata. Stock debut puts Lemonade at more than double the valuation from SoftBank. From 29 to 58, it even went to 96. Today's price is about 51. Companies sold 11 million shares, and the uh, underwriters were Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Allen & Co., Barclays, JMP Securities, William Blair & Lion Tree, Oppenheimer. The company raised $480 million uh, and a $300 million funding round by SoftBank Group in April 2019. 
bestowing the company a pre-money valuation of $1.7 billion. Today, as of today's price, September 18, 2020, uh, Lemonade is at about $3 billion. So it's little close to uh, double. So 28 times 2 is 56. It's now trading at about $3 billion. Founded in 2015, just five years ago, the company raised also $480 million during that time. So right now, they also raised $480 million. And the current, uh, the, the prior investors, the VC, were Champel Capital, eBrands.VC, G Squared, SoftBank, General Callis, GV, Thrive Capital, Tusk Ventures, Expansion, Venture Capital. So these were the guys who were early. And uh, they said the following, the current customers of Lemonade, 70% of them are under the age of 35. It's millennials that quickly adopted. It reminds me of whom? If you can remember the first company that had 100% or 90% of their clients are millennials were uh, Square. So Square was a $10 company that went $150 and uh, yeah, so Square, Cash App. Cash App, uh, Jack Dorsey, uh, Please be reminded that millennials are not, uh, not a stupid bunch. Millennials, if you study uh, what companies they are endorsing, is usually a 10x company. Lemonade said that 70% of its customers are under the age of 35. 90% of customers were not switching from another insurer as a result of how the company pitches itself. These millennials are going to stay there for life. We bring insurance to a mobile-first, digitally native world, the company said in its SEC filing. Our playful bots, what you saw a while ago was Maya. That was a chat. That was an AI bot. Fun, intuitive interaction at any age, all the more so to a generation that grew, that grew up with a smartphone. Renters insurance quotes take about two minutes. With homeowners, the current insurance quotes would take about, uh, while homeowners insurance takes about three minutes, claims can be paid out as little as three seconds, the company claims. Companies are built on human that currently are built on human brokers and claims agents have many strengths, no doubt, but what's appealing to millennials and Gen Zs is not chief among them. So the company reported that 2019 revenues were $67 million, up from $22 million, and a 2019 loss of $108 million, wider than the loss of $52 million. Uh, I'll show you first quarter, second quarter 2020, that loss has narrowed down to as little as $9 million. Currently, Lemonade only offers renters and homeowners insurance in the U.S., along with contents and liability insurance in Germany and the Netherlands. Lemonade's strategy is to expand into other insurance products like auto, life, umbrella policies, as its younger, young customer base matures. Actually, for auto insurance, I'd say that Tesla insurance also uh, is... It, Tesla wants to also have car insurance for those Tesla uh, models. So... so uh, and I think like Apple and all of these uh, big companies that have wearables, Apple and Google could also offer you insurance someday. So insurance industry, in my view, is a, is a rife industry to be disrupted. Now, of course, this one is a branding thing uh, to, to focus on the love. Social advocacy is built into the business model. As they said, they only get 25% flat fee. Everything in the excess, you can choose which charity uh, you will donate. So in 2019, Lemonade donated $600,000 to 26 nonprofit causes, a big surge given the company has donated a total of $800,000 since it started in 2017. It has intended to appeal to a socially conscious young adult posing, uh, so the novelty of our business model makes its efficacy unpredictable and susceptible to unintended consequences. Um, so consumers are exercising their power with Black Lives Matter, me too, prompting businesses around the world to change practices and alter the optics of certain brands. Lemonade goes one step further, making social advocacy a major business model uh, part of its brand. Our commitment to charitable giving through our give back program may not align our interests with those of the customers to the extent anticipated. Moreover, our commitment to charitable giving may not resonate with our existing customers or may fail to attract new customers. I doubt it. People love the give back. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Um, Lemonade uh, in that Q2, August 12, 2020. Oh, sorry. Uh, how, how do I stop this? Um, caption, stop. Okay. Ay, uh, sorry. 
Okay, insurance tech startup Lemonade has released its results for second quarter 2020. They reported a 9% decrease in its net loss and 115% in, uh, so that's the IFP, in forced premiums. So IFP is the revenues. Uh, the firm posted a net loss of just $21 million compared with a net loss of $23 million for the same period last year. Since its exemption in 2015, Lemonade has been seeing success uh, targeting young first-time insurance buyers with long-term goals being to retain these customers for life. Lemonade has raised $319 million from the IPO after high demand saw its price increase to $29 a share. The firm is not yet profitable, but the company, uh, Morgan Stanley, forecasts net profitability by 2026. That will be about six years from now, underwriting profitability by 2030, 10 years from now. So, um... Being an Amazon of insurance is uh, gonna take some time for 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 purposes of the people who wants cash flows and cash flows only. It took uh, Tesla uh, Tesla was profitable since 2019. Uh, Amazon was profitable after 20 years. So if you're looking for profitability, Lemonade is not one of them. Agree. But then again, you have to understand that the business model is on scale. So it, it the the flywheel effect of Lemonade has to do with the massive scale. If they have more customers, they've got better data, they can offer cheaper insurance, and therefore that cheaper insurance will translate to profitability. So uh, so it's a win-win thing, that flywheel effect. Uh, the company has actually fared well in the pandemic compared to its more traditional insurance peers. For instance, less than 1% of Lemonade's customers opted to defer their payments in Q2 Retention rates, click-through rates, conversion rates all held steady. So during the pandemic, these insurance payers did not renege. Less than 1%, that means 99% paid. Additionally, the firm saw little to no impact on positive trends that had been seen during the coronavirus outbreak. So 100% growth in Q2 2020 is a good thing. Millions of people were fired, furloughed, billions in lockdown. Lemonade entered Q2 on a defensive footing. At the start of the quarter, we significantly lowered our marketing spend, suspended non-essential hiring, offered to defer customers' payments. Then we braced for impact. We expected to see a spike in churn, a drop in demand, a hit to our cash flow. Nothing materialized. It continued. Indeed, the COVID-19 pandemic seems to have been a fundamental accelerator of the trend towards digitization throughout society. Lemonade is thankful on the right side of that dislocation. Instead, over the Q2 period, Lemonade improved its IFP by 115% to $155 million, primarily due to an 84% increase in the number of customers, as well as a 17% increase in premium per customer. The firm's total customer count today is 814,000, this is an increase of 84% compared to the second quarter of 2019. So that 64% growth a while ago is now 84%. Uh, this is actually a good insurance review. Uh, what you need to know, uh, should uh, this is actually uh, from a Think Insurance, this is from an insurance agent. Um, this is a good review. He was sharing uh, whether he can actually afford a $5 insurance, should he switch to Lemonade and so forth. Uh, insurance from an insurance agent in U.S. So I would suggest that you watch it. Actually, why don't we watch just one minute? It's a 25 minute, but I'll fast forward to the meat. Remove. 1350. Okay, price doesn't change. I didn't think it would. So, uh, so he was actually showing the policy options and uh, the questions that you'll answer. He did it. Uh, he did it. So he, he showed two types of insurance and also talked so that was a 25 minute video. That is the content of uh, this uh, Think Insurance. He was uh, trying to insure his home uh, and then he was plugging in how much he had to pay. Was it $1,000 per year and so forth? Uh, I think in his case, because he was insuring a $500,000 home uh, and he put a lot of data. So he, he had to pay about $1,900. But uh, if it was standard, like he did, he did say that for renters, uh, it was about five to six dollars. So the advertising uh, trickery of five dollars per month, he said that that wasn't tricks. Uh, it was real. Five dollars per month, or depending really on which uh, building or how old that building that you are renting your condo is, um, it would be about six dollars per month. So this video is what uh, this video talks about that. 
Lemonade CEO actually chat with Jim uh, Kramer on Mad Money uh, a few days after the IPO. Lemonade is a homeowner, a focus on AI and technology. I'll, I'll see if we have time. Um, Lemonade gathers 100 times more data, talks in the TechCrunch Disrupt SF2018. Um, there's a lot of things that we can uh, see on Lemonade. What is their S1 filing all about? The prospectus of Lemonade. The Lemonade uh, prospectus has a mission. They want to harness technology and social impact to be the world's most loved insurance company. That is a wild mission. Lemonade is rebuilding insurance from the ground up, digital substrate. Uh, what that means is as in atom by atom, per blood, per blood type. They are really shaking up the insurance. Innovative business model, they're leveraging data, AI, contemporary design, and behavioral economics, chatting to another bot, AI Jim, who pays claims in as little as three, three seconds. So AI to AI. This breezy experience, uh, sorry, let's, let's, let's read, uh, sorry. So um, let's read that. The two-minute chat with our bot, AI Maya, is all it takes to get covered with renters or homeowners insurance. We expect to offer a similar experience for other insurance products over time. Claims are filed by chatting to another bot, AI Jim, who pays claims in as little as three seconds. This breezy experience belies the extraordinary technology that enables it. A state-of-the-art platform spanning marketing to underwriting, customer care to claims processing, finance to regulation. Our architecture melds artificial intelligence with the humankind and learns from the prodigious data it generates to become even better at delighting customers and quantifying risk. I think I have to show you a video where somebody had a fire in his home. Thank goodness for Lemonade Insurance. That claim was very fast and he has an, you know, it's, it's one of the most, uh, I think uh, that, that, is a, that is a video that I should share to you. Nonetheless, uh, table of contents, you could see that the gross losses ratio has been going down because it is a massive flywheel effect. The more customers there are, the more profitable this will be. For your information, Shopify, as in uh, the Shopify, started with 42,000 clients and now 2 million clients. If you are nitpicky about cash flows, you will miss out that 50 times move of Shopify because during 2015, IP of Shopify was also loss making. So a lot of these great businesses start with losses, but as you know, we are looking at the trajectory and the trends of these companies. Therefore, I really don't care whether they lose money this year and then lose another as long as those losses are narrowing. I don't mind if the profitability is on 2026 and 2027 or 2030. I believe in buying growth companies. So as long as the company continues to grow and it has proven that, it passes my test. Nonetheless, let's take a look. Um, what is the TAM of insurance? They said that the premiums approximately $5 trillion globally. So uh, $5 trillion and their sales this year was what? Uh, 800,000 customers, $133 million last year. Even if you grow that, that would be just about $200 million. They are just scratching the surface. So um, the sheer scale of this industry is truly big. Um, our strategy, um, their strategy is actually very good. Um, I'm going to share to you how the, they keep on growing their customers. Graduates, this is also important. Um, I'll show you the strategy. This was uh, captured in a video. Why uh, people from renters will graduate into um, from condos to homes. So, of course, from condominiums, you become richer. Then you get your own home. And then, you, of course, a home. Once you're 10 years, so 30 years old, you're renting a condo. 40 years old, you're probably owning a home. By 60 years old, hopefully you have a better home. So uh, as the years go by, those condo policies, you those condo policies would have to be upgraded and then upgraded as you uh, hopefully go higher and higher in life. So those are things that are imputed in the growth strategy of Lemonade. Actually, it is so good that I have to show to you um, two of these uh, videos. I have time. Uh, let me show to you that video. Mm. It's uh, it's actually in this uh. Wait, wait, wait. I think that it is. How this stock will affect Warren Buffett? Yes, 
Um, actually, uh, if the people realize that uh, lemonade is better than Geico, then uh, it will affect the insurance premiums of uh, Berkshire Hathaway. We have to watch the first part, but I will. Um, I will fast forward that to the inside of the case. street. My purse was stolen, which customers. Um, here's their strategy and results to date. Um, customers spend more money. Actually, this is the strategy. Um, customers spend more on the renter's insurance over time. That is because the condo graduates to the home and so forth. Uh, let me see, let me show to you about the fire incident. Wait. Oh, I think it was here. Mm. This one. Yeah, starting here. Watch this. It's just uh, really great to be able to uh, hook them up with a hotel immediately and also take care of the damage uh, to the building. Getting to know my claim supervisor uh, was incredible. Not only did he give me like the factual information that I needed, but he made me feel as comfortable as possible given what had happened. So uh, this lemonade uh, renter, you know, he he underwent a fire in a home. So this was the guy. Uh, of course, a lemonade representative helped. Uh, let's let's watch it. Where where is the start? Uh, somewhere. So you could see that the company employees are also passionate about helping. So of course, if you have, if you build a culture of great, great things, um, your cult will have. That was great incredible. People. Like that was great. Even in cases where Jim can't authorize the whole payment, AI Jim has done so much of the heavy lifting that by the time a human comes into the picture, everything is laid out neatly in front of them, allowing us to settle claims with a minimum of hassle, a minimum of delay, and a minimum of overhead. The combination of our app and our meticulously trained customer experience team helped us achieve a net promoter score of above 70. That's a score usually seen by the likes of Apple and Tesla, not insurance companies. One of the moments when I realized that I was working at a very different type of insurance company was handling a fire claim. About an hour and a half ago, I got a phone call from my super in New York. I was at a meeting um, in Soho. Uh, saying that my apartment had caught fire. Fire department came and put it out, and most of my belongings were destroyed. Uh, it looks like the source of the fire was somewhere in the kitchen. So this is the kitchen. This damaged an apartment complex, and the person wasn't able to stay there. And it was just uh, really great to be able to uh, hook them up with a hotel immediately and also take care of the damage uh, to the building. Getting to know my claim supervisor uh, was incredible. Not only did he give me like the factual information that I needed, but he made me feel as comfortable as possible given what had happened to me. They say that you don't miss your water until your well runs dry. Well, if I didn't have lemonade, I'd be in a, a very dry well. Right? So can you imagine how this lemonade truly helped a person? If he didn't have lemonade, he truly had a dry well. Um, imagine you were working and then suddenly your apartment caught fire. Every belonging you had is gone in smoke. So uh, thank goodness for lemonade. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Okay, I sound like a hyper, but that is real. Um, and so let's watch a few things. Um, Okay, so I was being asked about questions that are not uh, related to Lemonade. Okay, so let me answer a few things. There's a question, Unity IPO, will you buy at what price? Well, Unity is discussed inside the awesome 10x inner circle. Should I share it for free? Are you guys sure that I'm going to share it? Well, Unity, I truly think is a great company. So uh, it's, it had an offer range from about 32 to 42. And uh, they are trying to price it in at 52, depending on where it opens at tonight. Um, I have my, I, I like the company. Um, it's going to open, I believe, at $52. Uh, sorry, the, the, the offer price was $52. I'm not sure at what price it opens. But as you know, just like this, Lemonade was a great company. 
It opened at 96 and then fell down to about 50. So I think that uh, you have to be a bit cautious when you're buying a company. That's good. Uh, I'm not saying that Unity is going to open $96. I don't know that. Then again, uh, I do understand that Unity is a great company. If it opens at $52, then I would be one of the few people that also will buy. I'm not even sure if I'm few. I'm pretty sure a lot of people also love Unity. Uh, you, of course, have to do your own due diligence or watch the Awesome 10X channel, um, the deep dives. So we do deep dives. There is a fee uh, for those who aren't aware. Friday is a free class, It's uh, but if you're not uh, handling the Friday free class picks, we do this daily. Monday to Friday, I have this 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. class. Let me plug um, our website, the www.awesome10x.com. You can register for a month. It's 20, sorry, it's 2,000 pesos or just $40 a month. Or you can subscribe for us for six months and uh, you could see that our Awesome 10X ideas uh, you can watch all of the classes that we've done ever since March, April, May, June, July, August, September. So it's an archived, uh, it's an archived library, and uh, you can always ask. You we have twenty four seven trading guidance for the Philippines and the U.S. markets, and we try to deliver as much as possible. Uh, you know, uh, the best companies only, only the ten x returns. We don't want to talk about only ten percent. Because truly, we believe in investing in the global best, only in disruptors, only in game changers. Now, um, Lemonade has a great... Uh, I, so, in finality, just uh, let me just close this all about Lemonade. For Unity, you can ask that to me separate time, separate way, uh, not here. Nonetheless, um, the case study on Lemonade is uh, truly, I think, a lot of people should uh, refresh. It is a refreshing new approach. A lot of case studies, a lot of uh, disbelievers uh, became a believer. Uh, the key differentiator indeed is uh, it's AI. I'd say it's AI and it is uh, behavioral economics. So uh, instead of fighting with customers over the same coin, we join our customers in fighting for a common cause. Um, the fact that all of their customers are uh, aged between 25 and 44 who have never bought insurance for their homes tells me a striking paradigm shift. So I'm seeing that happen. And um, this is a company that I've seen with Beyond Meat, with Apple, with Tesla. And all of these companies have gone 10x. Uh, and I believe in that. So any company that is a cult has a reason to be a cult. Insurance giants uh, like uh, Allstate Corporation, State Farm, and Liberty Man Mutual are all uh, trying to copy Lemonade uh, at the risk of actually getting uh, becoming extinct. So you know that Ford and GM had to be EV before they become extinct uh, by 2025 or 2030 until uh, Tesla captures all their market share. So you, you, you get the point. <clears throat> um, a few things more before I end. Uh, what, what should I share to you? First, open source insurance policy. Welcome to Lemonade. We promise to do our best to make sure you love it here. The squeezed version. Who is covered? Hmm. So this is what the policy looks like. And actually check it out. Uh, and uh, if the stuff gets damaged or stolen, electronics. Actually, the videos that uh, th there are several videos that are uh, very comprehensive in sharing uh, on how to, to get your claims. Uh, if, so, if, so it, to me, uh, I like the fact that it is, uh, uh, you know, all the options for, your, uh, for, for what you want to ensure is all uh, just digital electronic device package, earthquake package. So that would compute how much you pay per month. So if you want to have more coverage, of course, there's more payments. If you own a better condominium and so forth, uh, own a better condo, whether you are... So there's a lot. Like, are you a renter or are you uh, just a, a building a renter or a homeowner? All those things. So typically, um, <clears throat> that, that, those are all uh, easy with Lemonade. Lemonades are live. Insurance will never be the same again. The digital insurance... I trust you, you trust me. Insurance didn't start out bad, but when you look back in history, it became bad. 
uh, people uh, suddenly, you know, trying to take advantage of all these insurance. So, uh, which is why a launch of Lemonade is so significant. Insurance reinvented uh, the science behind Lemonade. A lot of these uh, articles are already good. Uh, it's all about trust and behavior, pure play, tech stack. Um, because uh, if you are uh, if you are trustworthy, then uh, they can lower and lower your uh, your premiums. So I think this is also happening with some insurance firms, wherein if they know that you are healthy, you are not likely to be at risk of cancer or heart disease, and they can check that with wearables data right now, uh, especially the advent of Google and Apple, all these wearables and Xiaomi and Samsung. So uh, we can actually get a better uh, claim, uh, better insurance package for you. So um, I, I will send all these links of the articles that I like and the links of the videos that I want you to watch. To end, uh, I would say the same thing. Um, Motley is a company that I believe in and um, is laminated by the insurance in, in industry disruptor is a viable alternative. Does it offer something better? Um, Growing through giving, I like that. Uh, you know, the company ticks in so many metrics. Uh, it ticks a lot. So uh, I'd say that it is an early uh, disruptor in a trend, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an incumbent. So uh, the, the sector has a lot to, to be fixed. I believe in this strategy, the light your customers grow fast, predictive data, machine learns. And that's uh, and it keeps on a flywheel effect. That moat is gonna be big over time. So uh, this is the this is their AI, their data advantage, uh, and it's being copied. To be honest, but I think like the millennials know who to go to. Uh, they will trust here, and when they trust this company, they'll never go back to any other company. So that's the same thing um, with. Uh, and that's, that's evident when you see the EBITDA margins, it's uh, narrowing the losses and as, as the years go by. So you could actually read the manifesto. The S1 filing reads like a manifesto. And uh, um, these are the numbers, the financials, if you want to. What are the risks? So the risks are the losses, uh, not achieve profitability in the near term. Uh, it all depends on how many customers are added uh, because you know that uh, the more customers, the more premiums, the better able they can to handle the risk. Because uh, let's say uh, AI tells you that out of uh, a thousand homes in the, that, that's evident in the world, it's all about probability. You know what? Actually, the video is so good that I should probably uh, share to you what Daniel Schreiber says. Um, Daniel Schreiber, let's assume that I can insure a million homes. If in a million homes, they all pay me a premium and only 1% of a million homes will truly get devastated, then that would be, uh, and AI is better than actu actuary. So 1 million, 1% would be 10,000. As long as I can insure 10,000, then that's good. Everything else is profits. So um, that's how uh, this was made. Uh, it will be a highly profitable company. Uh, once it expands that reach of scale. And I believe that the company is uh, built on the ground up, correct, correct business model. Everything is uh, done well, customer delight. Uh, the, the companies that remind me that truly delighted customers were only Apple, Tesla, Amazon, and most of them beyond me, most of them went just sky high, Zoom video. So that, this is why I believe that Lemonade should be part of your awesome 10X portfolio should be there, maybe 5% or just 3% because you might be afraid of the pricing, $51, that's against the $28 IPO. It could go down to about $40, $42, even go to $28, but I would doubt that you could actually get it lower than $28. So um, how do I handle this? I'll buy it $48 to $51 range. And then as the quarters go by, that's when I will see whether I will add more or just uh, hold on to it until it goes to $300 or $500. So is it a 10x company? I do think it's a 10x. So, so 28 times 10 is $280. I'm going to get 5x if I wait maybe five years. That's what I believe uh, Lemonade is doing. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.